In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 8, Section 3, you know, Calculator, Questions 7 through 10. So in the middle section of the problem solving. Question 7, what is the solution set to the equation above? Now, there are a couple ways to do this problem. Academically, you could square both sides and solve it. I think whenever you see a question involving the solution set, plug in the answers. I know it's a non-academic way, but it's more efficient. It guarantees that you solve it right. And so what I mean by that is, let's just start with negative one. You see negative one is in three of the choices. So let's just try negative one for x. And so here we're gonna get negative one times two. So we get negative two plus six. We get the square root of four plus four equals negative one plus three, and that's gonna be two plus four, that's gonna be six equals two, no. And so the advantage of this method, as soon as negative one doesn't work, you really found the answer, right? Because all three of these contain negative one. Let's just try five to double check. So five times two is 10 plus six, that's the square root of 16 plus four equals five plus three, that's eight. And you see four plus four does equal eight just a better way, I think, of solving that problem. All right, let's take a look at question number eight. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to f of x divided by g of x for x greater than three? This is another common question. Look for factoring here. This has is to a greater power, x cubed, and so try to re-express this. Can we factor this out? Well, we can factor out an x, and if we do that, I'll do it down here. If we factor out an x from here, we get x, times x squared minus nine. And here we've seen this many times. This is the difference, a perfect square. So we're gonna rewrite it. This is still the numerator. That's gonna be x plus three, x minus three. And the bottom, can we factor out here? All right, we can factor this equation. We can do x, let's see, factors of three, negative three to get negative two. So that's gonna be x minus three and x plus one. All right, and you see now x minus three, x plus one, we can cancel out the x minus threes and that's the answer. x times x plus three over x plus one is choice D. All right, let's take a look at question number nine. In the xy plane, the graph of the equation above is a circle. Point P lies on the circle, has coordinates 10, negative 5. If PQ is a diameter of the circle, what are the coordinates of Q? Remember, this is one concept that might come up. You need to know the standard form for the equation of the circle. This is in the standard form, right? x minus h squared plus y, in this case, plus k squared equals r squared, right? And so here, we know the coordinates of the circle. This is the x coordinate, is 6. This is the y, negative five. It's the opposite sign, like the vertex form. And so if we have the circle, we know six, negative five is the circle. And they tell us that point P is on the circle. On the circle means that the edge of the circle has coordinates 10, negative five. So it's directly above the center. It's up here, it's 10, negative five. And so if we were to draw the circle be like, like this, it's right above it. And so we can now figure out, sorry about the drawing, that the diameter is four, it's directly above it. And we're told that PQ is a diameter, what are the coordinates? So we have 10, negative five. We know that the radius is four, let's go the other way. <laughs> Such a bad drawing. Well, we can see on the same plane that this would be down four, it'd be two, negative five. <laughs> All right, so the answer there is A. And let's do the last question, number 10. A group of 202 people went on an overnight camping trip taking 60 tents with them. Some of the tents held two people each and the rest held four each. Assuming all the tents were filled to capacity and every person got to sleep in a tent, exactly how many of the tents were two person tents? This is a system of equations. So there's a couple ways to do this. You know, the academic way is start with the first equation, the single variable, just the number of people in tents, and we've got some people, some of the tents are two, some are four. So we're gonna say X equals, these are the um, two people tents, and Y four. And we know that there were 60 total tents. And so we could, our single variable is just gonna be X plus Y equals 60. Then we need one with a coefficient to express the numbers. And we know there's 202 people, so we know that 
2x plus 4y equals 202. And at this point, you could just use substitution. We want to get the two people tent, which is x. So we could solve, we could get y in terms of x. And so we could say for this first equation, we can subtract x. We know that y equals 60 minus x. And then we take this and for y, and we plug it in here. Now we're only dealing with x. So we've got 2x plus, and we've got 4 times the quantity 60 minus x equals 202. And then we get 2x plus 240 minus 4x equals 202. And I'm going to, this, these x's here are going to be negative 2x. I'm going to bring them to the right side, so I have positive 2x. And then I'm going to subtract 202, and I get 38. And the answer is 19. Divide both sides by 2. So x equals 19. That's the number in the people tent. Now there is a shortcut for this problem. If you've watched these videos, it's more intuitive method. Whenever you see a question like this, where you have sort of two people in a tent and then four, so two is a subset, and we know there are 60 total, what you can do is you can say, well, I'm going to say that all 60 tents are at two. Now this is not the answer, but it's a true statement. They had at least two or four, right? We're going to say all 60 had two and that's 120. But we know 120 is not the answer because they tell us that 202. So you have to say, like, how many extra people do I have to make up between the minimum and when we combine the minimum with the maximum, which is 4? The difference between 202 and 120 is 82. What's the difference between 2 and 4? Well, it's 2, and so that's what we have to make up for increments. The increments we have to make up, 41. 41 is the number of people, the four people in a tent. There's 60 total, and so it's 19. I know it's a little tricky, especially if I've written all over this, but if you can understand it's a shortcut, whenever you see a subset question, start with the minimum, multiply it out, and then find the difference and the increments, and you can solve it. So you can might review this video and watch it. Uh, if not, you can certainly use the academic method. Either way, the answer is C.